Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about TTRPGs. Hmm. First up for TTRPG, as was yesterday, uh, so we will stick through, stick with it through this week. We have the Stone Creek coffee mug. Um, very neon, very nice. Uh, it's kind of like pastel -y neon almost, but either way, I don't really know. It's a great, great little mug. I love it. Um, and inside of it, we still have the uh, vanilla chai from Bigelow. Again, a nice sort of rich uh, spice tea with a nice vanilla undertone. I know I said nice like four times in that description, but that's not really important. What is important is what we are talking about today. We are continuing on our journey with Kids on Bikes. This is a really, really fantastic system. I realized that I did not actually tell you guys who wrote this game. Uh, this was written by Renegade Game Studios. Um, it's a really, really cool uh, studio. I love the stuff that they do. Uh, they make board games as well. Uh, if you know what Alice is Missing is, that is one of these. I might actually talk about that game at some point here because I think that it's a really, really cool, fun game. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, cracking this bad boy back open, uh, we are going to go ahead and talk about some of the major uh, concepts, themes, game mechanics that you are going to actually need to be able to play this here game. Uh, I picked out three of them because I think that these three things are sort of the biggest tenets of this game. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. So let's just go ahead and let's dive into it. Um, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the dice system. Uh, and you might be saying, Ben, why would we be talking about the dice system? It's, it's a TTRPG. You take the D20, you roll the D20, and you do stuff, right? Yes, but also, no. Um, so the dice system in this game is actually my favorite dice system in any game that I have gotten to play. I think that it is so cool. I think it's so fun. I think it's uh, just this fantastic, fantastic... Uh, idea that they have put out here and i'm sure they aren't the first ones to do it if they are amazing if they're not i want to know what other games it is so if you know please tell me about it um, but we are going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the dice system first and foremost uh there are uh six stats as with uh m most ttrpgs that's not true as with several ttrpgs that have gotten really big um and associated with each one of the stats you're going to have one of your dice uh, and you might be saying, how does that work? Uh, well, your six stats are Brains, Brawn, Fight, Flight, Charm, and Grit. Um, and you're going to get it, and you're going to, when you're creating your character, assign each one of your die types to one of those stats. So, let's say uh, you want to be very good at Fight. You're going to go ahead, you're going to put your D20 on that one. From there, you only have a die pool going up to a D12 to assign to the other five stats. So then if you give... Uh, your brains, a d10, your charm, a d6, grit, a d12, you know, etc. That is what you then roll for that stat every time you roll it. Um, and you might say, well, but how does how does that work? How do how do I do well on things that I'm bad at? Uh, there is a rule in here called exploding rolls. Uh, it is exactly what it sounds like. If you know what exploding dice are, and you already are well aware of how it works. Uh, when you roll the highest value on a die, it goes ahead and explodes, which means you take that number, you set it to the side, and you roll the die again, and you just keep going until you stop exploding, uh, or you beat the DC that the GM has set for you. Um, so, while you might have a D4 uh, in, I don't remember what I said it was in, uh, we'll call it uh, flight, so you are uh, flat-footed, uh, you don't uh, move particularly well, you can still do these incredible things if you can just keep rolling that 4. And you are more likely to roll that 4 on a d4 than you are to roll the 20 on the d20. Um, but the uh, different die types are tied to uh, different sort of ranks in that, uh, in that way. So a d20 is superb. Even upon first meeting you, people can see that this is a great strength of yours. d12 is impressive. People would say you're really, really good at that thing. But it isn't necessarily the most obvious thing about you. Uh, the 10 is you're above average, but not like remarkably good above average. D8 is below average. Uh, you're fine at it, but still not, you know, fantastic. Uh, D6 is bad. You People you know would say that you're not good at it, but it's not necessarily the most obvious thing. And D4 is you're terrible at it. It might be a very obvious thing that you are not particularly good at uh, as you are introduced to people. Uh, so, this is a really, really cool system because it allows for so much variability uh, and it allows for you to actually like play into your stats a little bit harder because you know the bounded area that you're going to be in 
when you succeed or when you try to make a roll with the exception of exploding rolls uh you if you have a d4 as something then you go ahead and you roll it and you are pretty well assured that you are going to have less than eight total and if the dc is going to be 10 or something you can give it a shot but it is still going to be very difficult for you to actually succeed on that so this system allows you to really know what your strengths are going to be um, and try to play into those harder and harder and harder. Usually we have like associated skill checks or something like that if we're playing Pathfinder 5e, something like that. This one doesn't have that. You just have your higher uh, possibility as you go forward, which is a really way, cool way to do it, I think. Um, speaking of the uh, ability to actually do something, uh, scaled success is the next thing I want to talk about with this system. Uh, I think this is a really cool concept uh, narratively. I am really glad that they actually just straight up and down included it in the game um, because I think that uh, more things should have scaled success, kind of kind of like Pathfinder does. Uh, 5e really sort of breaks people into thinking you either succeed or you fail. Uh, when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. Whatever. <laughs> um, but there is a like scaled success rate in uh, Kids on Bikes as well as there is on Pathfinder. Um, so the Kids on Bikes has a series of ranges here uh, on page 33, nice little table. Um, and I'm just gonna run through what they are real quick uh, and we'll talk about how they actually interact as we go through it. Uh, if you get a zero, like it, it, or sorry, not if you get a zero, if you hit the DC, so you get zero above or below the DC, uh, you succeed, but just barely. Um, nothing but unexpected necessarily happens, uh, and it's a very, like, by the skin of your teeth sort of roll. Uh, moving upwards, uh, one to four above the DC. You succeed, but not necessarily impressively. Uh, any benefits should be very, very small, if anything at all. Uh, five to nine, you succeed quite impressively. Uh, you will probably get a little extra benefit from succeeding in this fashion, because there is... Uh, the ability to have succeeded by enough to make it a marked difference and then 10 or higher uh plus 10 or higher you succeed smoothly and easily likely it looks like you're just showing off at that point uh at the gm's discretion um there is an unexpected degree of positive success past what you necessarily were trying to actually do which is a really cool like sort of way to keep going up now if you are running exploding uh, dice up usually uh, and I believe it says so actually in the book uh, you will stop when you hit the DC when you meet the DC or pass it however I as a GM think it's fun to just see how high you can go with that a lot of the time and so I'll just let the person keep going keep going keep going uh, but the the concept is that if you are really bad at something it is kind of a miracle that you're making it to that number anyway uh, and you don't necessarily go higher than that but i do think that it is a lot of fun to just like keep racking it up see what happens uh, and see where we go uh from from there um now another really interesting thing with the scaled success uh idea is uh when we get into the negatives here where you start failing you will start picking up something called adversity tokens when you use adversity tokens you can go ahead and spend it to get a static basically plus one uh to a roll Adversity tokens you spend up to the DC usually um, after the roll is done and then you kind of know what you are doing from there. And this is if you fail rolls. Doesn't really matter necessarily how hard you fail it, but you will fail it and you'll get an adversity token to be able to spend later to help bolster your successes or bolster, bolster your future rolls. Once you spend it, it's gone. Um, but getting into the failing side of the sliding, su sliding success scale, we have one below to four below character fails but not too badly there's not going to be necessarily major consequences for it past the actual just failure of the role um or the failure of the uh, thing you were trying to do uh minus five to minus nine it's bad but it's not going to be a total disaster there might be a little bit of a lasting consequence or maybe you're just you you lose confidence in something something like that minus 10 to minus 14 it is a profound failure uh this is a really really bad failure where you have bitten off more than you can chew there's probably something bad that is going to linger with you for a little while here and then 15 below or lower it is staggering or catastrophic <laughs> uh there are both immediate and long-term consequences period straight up and down uh the gm is going to put you in a purposely 
awful situation because you have failed to roll by so so much this is this is rolling your nat one um when the dc is like 19 but this is where adversity tokens come in right if you've got three adversity tokens and you roll that natural one and you just gotta get up to the next failure level you can just spend those to make it so you aren't going to break your leg jumping off of a shed or something like that so that is where the adversity tokens come in and help you sort of play with the scaled success uh idea so that you are not necessarily stuck every time you roll something because you would then also get an adversity token for failing the roll but you wouldn't necessarily like get more and more and more um so uh the final one of the three things i want to talk about today is the powered character this is where you can really see the stranger things uh interaction with this game you might be saying what is a powered character what, why don't we all have powers no you're all very normal people and that's kind of the problem uh, because you are kids on bikes for the most part. Um, so the powered character is the way to mitigate using uh, or mitigate that power structure against the players uh, because you are likely going to be operating in a space where you are a, a child on a bicycle or you are a teenager with uh, like a bat or something or an adult who is going against odds here to help out whoever. The idea of the powered character is to level the playing field a little bit. But a powered character is not a character played by one particular PC. Instead, it is the character played by all of the players around the table um, because you, everybody's got to have a little bit of influence on this individual that is going to be sort of their lifeline. Uh, the way that they have it set up in here is specifically for psychic uh, abilities and telekinetic abilities and that kind of thing. Uh, again very stranger things um this is represented by a pool of psychic energy tokens that you can spend to do stuff with the character uh but the way that the character actually works is that when the character is introduced they are described and then the gm will hand out note cards to each of the individual players with different aspects of uh that powered character and then those players can interact with those uh note cards that are the powers for the character to actually like go ahead and try to do things with them when uh, somebody wants to try and activate a power or something like that, they go ahead, the GM will set a DC, uh, they will then pick up, uh, not the GM, the player who is trying to use this power, who is actively controlling uh, the power character in this moment, picks up 2D4, goes ahead and rolls it, uh, and the goal is to then hit the DC with that 2D4, uh, or go past it so that you can actually succeed on what you need to do. Uh, when you spend your psychic energy tokens. If you don't hit that, then you are spending more and more and more psychic energy tokens or taking the failure. If you hit zero or lower with the psychic energy tokens, or if you spend so that you have zero or fewer psychic energy tokens, which is possible for the GM's discretion, suddenly your uh, power character is in a bad way. So it has to be something where everybody around the table says, yes, this is okay. We are wanting to do this and you are pushing forward. Uh, the powered character is, uh, controlled every by everybody individually but also at the same time and when you get a note card with a thing on it that is your aspect to control uh you don't then get to like hand that off to somebody else or nobody can take that away from you so everybody has uh, basically uh the ability to access the powers of the site of the powered character that they have been given by the gm there's a small variant rule to it where the gm doesn't hand out all of the abilities right away and just as they become relevant they go ahead and they hand out uh, the cards to people and you then learn how those things interact uh, as the character develops as the game progresses so the power character is sort of the like gamey part of the game more than anything else uh, and it's a really cool way to sort of do actual combat because you again are just a normal individual you don't necessarily have a whole lot uh, that is going to support you in this role where you are trying to succeed against the forces of whatever so pyro character is the way to mitigate that um plus it gives you just sort of like a, a the littlest bit of a buffer not like a big buffer but just like the littlest bit of something between you and maybe the government agent with a gun or something like that so pyro characters you don't even have to use them in your game necessarily we had one uh when we played our halloween time one shot uh but 
in a one shot it's a little bit more difficult to actually like utilize because it it, you just sort of start doing stuff with it and you see how it works out and it's a game of experimentation. Um, so you can just as easily run this entire game without using that part of it. Uh, entirely up to you. It is a really fun aspect of it and I do recommend it because when we played with it, it was really cool to just sort of like have the ability to do these things, but uh, you don't need to. You, d you just don't need to. Um, but those are the three biggest things that I wanted to like talk about uh and go over uh they're the three biggest like game mechanic -y kind of things that i think you need to know uh offhand when you're talking about this game so hopefully that was actually helpful to you <laughs> um but uh yeah that is everything i have for you guys today so uh thank you guys so much for making me part of your morning routine i really do appreciate it and thank you so much in particular to my subscribers you guys are the ones that make this show possible if you want to support the show subscribe uh, either on YouTube or on whatever podcasting platform it is that you are listening on. It is the best way to just sort of like directly help out the show. Um, I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so very much. Um, and like I said, that's everything I have for you. So don't forget everybody, drink tea, play TTRPGs, and keep on rolling. <laughs>